What's up, everybody? Pumpkin here. So, Reaver Hunters. Uh, Reaver Hunters, for those of you who don't know, used to be a card in uh, Old Gwent in Northern Realms where uh, you, you would make a bunch of them, and the more you played, the more power they gave each other, and they just amassed a ton of points on the board. Well, we don't exactly have that exact same card, but we have a very similar card. We have Centurion Royal Guard. Uh, deploy boost self by three for every other uh, guard under your control. The, the first one you play is four. The next one you play is seven. The next one you play is ten, etc. Um, so the idea is you play a ton of these via uh, Operator, Adalia, uh, Summoning Circle. If you're going to pull one, you have Necromancy to spawn another one. Uh, you have Reinforcements is really strong. So... Uh, it, it's kind of like a combo -y deck, but it's super consistent because of Kalanthi. Uh, Kalanthi, now that you don't have to put a card on top uh, to top deck with her, uh, she's just kind of the combo card for Northern Realms. It allows you to find whatever you need, whenever you need. Um, so the only unfortunate thing about this deck is DJ or, or Dijkstra with uh, Townsfolk is pretty oppressive. So... Just like in every other deck, unless you're running like Scorch or Gigni, uh, the counterplay to that deck is simply 2-0, uh, which can be difficult, but you have to go for it anyway. So uh, that is the only downside of this deck. Um, but other than that, it's a fun deck. Um, I'll, I'll go through the list really quickly. Uh, Queen Calanthe allows you to play two cards in one turn, uh, the first one being Northern Realms, and the second one uh, you get to choose from your deck to add to your hand. So that's really, really powerful. Um, yeah, so Roche... Roche the idea of this card is you do run two blue stripe commandos, so that's kind of nice. Um, it's the type of card that you want to play early on. If you can draw this and not your commandos, it's kind of cool because, well, you get to thin two. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. Uh, I, I should mention down here. Um, so blue stripe scouts are typically for the royal guard, but the reality is it never happens because I have to like 2-0 because they're playing uh, Dijkstra or... I don't draw the Royal Guards in round one. So typically I use the Blue Stripes Scouts on uh, Blue Stripes Commandos just because, well, it, it's nice. It's worth eight points and it's pretty good. Queen Adalia, obviously going to be your bread and butter for your uh, your Royal Guards. Royal Decree adds consistency. Bloody Barons, kind of auto-include in every Northern Realm stack. It's just a fantastic card. Same goes with Kira. Operator. So Operator you're going to be wanting to use on um, the Royal Guards very early on. You want to do this first because um, Operator is, it spawns and summon, so it doesn't get the deploy effect, whereas Adalia does get the deploy effect, right? It's spawn and play. So if you have multiple ways to get these um, Royal Guards on the board, the first one you should always do is Operator, just because it will not get the deploy effect. That way, the next one you do play goes to seven. Um, summoning Circle. Obviously, very good card in any kind of combo base deck. Uh, typically, you don't play this in round one. You want to save this for round three. Or in round two, if you're going to 2-0 them. Uh, John Natalis is the new tutor for Nor Northern Realms. Uh, plays a Warfare from the deck. The deck has two Warfare. Reinforcements is the main one. It's just a good card. Works really, really well with Royal Guard. Typically worth a lot of points. Um, you'll, you'll find out that this is one of the stronger cards in the deck. Uh, and Knighthood is in the deck because it's another Warfare and you don't really want your Natalis to break. It doesn't have any um, synergy with the deck outside of it being Warfare, right? There's no Tritum Infantry in the deck, which might seem bad, but it's still a 6 for 6, and you can tutor with Natalis. Still an 8-point play, which is not bad, and it thins your deck. Uh, Necromancy. So Necromancy is obviously very strong. Uh, you can make more Blue Stripe Scouts. You can make more Commandos. You can make uh, more Royal Guards. So what I typically do, let's say my hand is pretty bad in round one and I'm just playing like mages in round one. Sometimes I'll just go ahead and play the Operator onto uh, Royal Guard or just play one of the Royal Guards in round one. Uh, basically, just play a guard so that you can necromancy it later. Or uh, typically, people remove them uh, because Royal Guards are going to get tons and tons of value. They typically remove the four strength one because... Well, usually the easiest one to remove uh and then you can necromancy in that round so you can typically bank on your opponent uh removing one of your royal guards just because if they don't they're probably just going to lose the game on the spot uh kud kudak you don't need this card you don't have to play it you can play vincent instead um this is kind of a tech card i'm trying the card out for now uh i don't know how good it is uh it is kind of nice if you can i had one game where i unlocked two add-ups uh, that were next to each other, so that was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, you, you don't have to play this card, but eh, seems okay. Six for six, purify. Not too shabby. Blue Shapes Commando, we talked about a little earlier, has a lot of value with uh, Roche Merciless. Uh, Runestone. 
So now that runestones are five provisions, um, they're actually not that bad. Uh, there, there's a good chunk of bronzes that have extra synergy, right? Hitting an additional like adept or spell weaver or enchantress is quite good. Hitting a blue stripe scout is pretty good if you have a command on the board. Obviously, for this deck, the best possible hit is the Royal Guard. If you can hit a Royal Guard with this, it's insane. Uh, so it's just a good card. Uh, every now and then, you'll hit the nuts. Adept, we are playing the Mage Package. You have Adept plus Spellweaver. Um, if I'm playing against a deck that is pretty aggressive in round one and is going to typically try to win the round, uh, a lot of the times I will play uh, Queen of Dahlia on the Spellweavers in round one, try to push them out of the round because... Yeah, you. in theory, you want to save all your, like, cards, combo cards for Royal Guard. But, well, if you get bled or you don't win round one and things go south, you'll end up losing. So don't get too greedy. Don't don't get super narrow-minded on uh, trying to maximize max points on Royal Guards because uh, that's not always the best thing to do. So Spellweaver is a great card with the, uh, the Mage Package. Uh, Royal Guard, obviously the bread and butter of the deck. It's kind of important that it's in it. Uh, Blue Stripe Scout, uh, you can put this on your Royal Guards. You can put this on your Blue Stripe Commandos. You have some flex there. And last but not least, we have the Enchantress. Great card. Six for four. Uh, if you have two of them, the second one's an eight for four. You could, in theory, play it with Queen of Dahlia if you really wanted to. It's like, your hand would have to be pretty bad for that to actually be the correct play. But uh, it's possible. Um, yeah. So this is... Just a fun deck. Um, if you're playing Northern Realms and maybe you've been playing a lot of Full Test or a lot of Meave and you want to play different Northern Realms later, uh, I highly suggest you give the deck a try. It is quite fun. Um, I, I, I should mention this. If you are playing round three and you have a 10 card round, Summoning Circle gets 10 ticks, right? 10 rounds are, are 9 plus 1 uh, because it starts with one base tick. Um, the Royal Guards are 5 provisions, so you want to immediately play it uh, and then you can wait 5 turns, pull one out, uh, Blue Stripe one. I uh, pull another one out. So, yeah. I, ideally, you get as many possible Royal Guards as you can. Um, but, yeah. Very fun deck. Uh, until Urgen starts seeing a ton of play. Uh, and even then, they would have to have a way of row stacking. So, unless they run Urden plus uh, Novellin or something. Um, yeah, it's a fun deck. I highly suggest you give it a try if you're looking for something new. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the gameplay. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Nice mess you've got here. <laughs> Never a problem. Four inches of steel could be <laughs> straight to jail. <laughs> Elves must die. Hey, Future Fry. How are you? You know why Huber got changed? Because otherwise he'd be broken with new Calanthe, so they have to. May your blade never dull. 
May your hand never waver. I don't love it because it's really bad against muzzle, but I've never seen Dijkstra run muzzle. I'm not too worried. Spam Bob Ross and prevent a pumpkin loss. That's funny. Boat. Tamaria has yet to speak its last. I think this is actually not that bad. If you're running reinforcements, this card's pretty good. And like even this play is pretty nice. It's like an eight point play. If you're playing Tridems, it's insane. Do it again? That's really weird. It should. I don't know why that's happening. I don't know how to fix it. Maybe it's my sound card? I don't know. Maybe I need to buy a new sound card. Does he really not have any bricks? Like, we're getting to the point where, like, he should start having bricks on combo. Okay. Alright, so now we have to draw, like, stupid well. We need, like, Circle, Adalia. Necro doesn't do anything. This is useless. I mean, it's like an 11. I should probably keep it. Throwing it away seems kind of silly. Yeah, okay. So we circle. We're gonna circle the royal guard. We're gonna royal create royal decree the Dahlia, and then we're gonna Calanthe. I don't know. Maybe the BB. BB is probably pretty good. Yeah. I mean, if he plays Townsfolk, I mean, I guess we can flex it. We can hold on to it. There's no rush. A runestone for another guard? Yeah, possibly. This deck seems really cool. It's a shame DJ has to ruin it. That's the thing. That's that's why like it's kind of important that the leader gets hot fixed because. You can't really play cool decks right now because this stupid shit is running around. Necromancy isn't bad. Yeah, but it's I, I might Calanthe Necromancy. Not a terrible idea. And play Squayatal? Yeah, but I don't want to have to only play one deck because people are abusing another deck. Like, that's kind of silly. We can win this.
Play seasonal? Eh, at some point. Is this card worth reinforcements? Definitely. Anything that makes more of these is worth. The soldier? I don't understand. Oh, just like this card in general? It can be. It's worth a lot if you get a ton of them. Is this the new Reaver Hunters? Yep. High time the north was cleansed. Not bad. I was going to wait and do this all in the last round, but because he puts this on, we lose points if we don't do it now. So I think it's important to do it now. So he has to kill this. I don't know. He He's got... I mean, we're 37 up. If he doesn't Townsfolk, he loses. I, I wanted to save all this uh, point slam towards the end, but like, if he does this, this is really bad. So, like, if one of these dies, we lose three points on every single one. And because we were playing three of them, we were losing nine points. So, just gotta go all in. And they say DJ is busted. <laughs> what are you doing, horsey? Hmm. 